actually what I decided to do is um, I switched over getting some of my PowerPoint lectures from my World Civ class because there's some in more interesting things with better pictures and some details I wanted to add into what I was uh, covering earlier. So part of also the Mesopotamian legacy is not just on the political states, but also on the religious and legal and some of the cultural sides. And that was some things that I was kind of leaving out in the discussion. So I just want to kind of return to some of the discussions I was having about the Akkadians, but from a different context. I want to show you something very interesting. There's a legend of Sargon of Akkad, okay? And if you notice down here, he talks about his mother was lowly um, and that he was, he says, my, my lowly mother conceived me in secret. She brought me forth. She placed me in a basket of reeds. She closed my entrance with bitumen. She cast me upon the rivers, which did not overflow me. The river carried me. It brought me to Aki, the irrigator. Aki, the irrigator, in the goodness of his heart, lifted me out. And then he raised him. Now. If you're familiar with the biblical story, and we are going to talk about the ancient Israelites, but notice that uh, the ancient Israelites coming from the same region here in the Bible in Exodus 2, 3 through 6, it says, When she could hide him no longer, she took for him, talking about Moses, a basket made of bulrushes and daubed, uh, dubbed it uh, with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. And his sister stood at a distance to know uh, what would be done with him. And then Pharaoh's daughter then takes him out. So do you notice it's interesting that Moses, who's supposed to be the greatest leader of the ancient Israelites, has a very similar origin story as Sargon the Akkadian. Um, what do you make of that? I'll let you decide, but I want you to see that um, apparent... Um, kind of narrative in the story okay and then the other thing is is that you know when we're talking about the Sumerians uh, they had things such as the calendar and the writing system and the computation methods for math that were absorbed by the Akkadians okay and um, part of that is that some Sumerian uh, legacy being put into these other kingdoms here's another interesting thing you know we, we there's a discussion of kingship that descends from heaven, but then you have all these kings in the ancient times that reigned for 28,000 years, 36,000 years, really long. And then there's the flood that sweeps over. Um, and so this, this discussion of a, of a catastrophic flood. Okay, so let's go here to Genesis. It talks about God creating man. And notice this. When Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son of his own likeness. And then it says, Adam lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Adam lived 930 years and then he died. And then we actually have a Methuselah who lives almost exactly at 1,000 years old. I don't know if many of you realize that the Bible actually claims that ancient humans actually could live for a thousand years. Um, but again, look at the text that we saw from Samaria, the idea that the further you go back, the larger the numbers you give to, to human beings. Again, a similarity that is worth uh, uh, noting. Okay. And so um, basically, uh, I'm going to skip this part here. Um, and then uh, outsiders that were called Amorites came through what is now Syrian Mesopotamia and uh, also borrowed uh, and let's see here okay so let's look at Babylon uh, who you've read in the text um, the most notable ruler was Hammurabi and he's basically famous for his law codes and so I want to just kind of make it like we're just going to really just focus on the fact that when we think about the rule of law okay and when you read his laws, they're pretty harsh, not really ones that we would consider to be civilized, although a part of civilization. But it was, you know, it's an important legacy because writing mixed with the idea of laws gives society a certain type of, of way, a code to live by that is firmly established, okay? 
And so I just kind of want you to uh, focus on that aspect of Babylon's legacy with uh, Hammurabi. Um, so he didn't have really an enduring regime, um, but he did have an enduring concept uh, um, and his um, setting up laws are something that we take for granted as that what states do. It's what civilization does, right? And so I'm just going to move um, back to our Assyrians a little bit further because what I also just want to point out, I was talking about how Mesopotamia had lots of war and how um, the, the geography made it that way. And, and Assyrians have been often viewed as very like violent uh, uh, people. The Bible paints them very negatively. Um, but uh, they have some co important cultural con contributions that I want us to focus on. Um, in the 19th century, there was unearthed an Assyrian library that housed more than 20,000 cuneiform tablets, uh, preserving centuries of writings and including a, a very famous epic called the Epic of Gilgamesh, a very important one. So we don't think often of Assyrians uh, contributing um, Culturally, you know, we think about their warring ways, uh, um, but in fact, they did have a lot uh, to offer. And um, the Epic of Gilgamesh is important. Um, to then just talk about Nineveh, um, which was the, the capital there, uh, it still exists in northern Iraq. And ancient Nineveh, as well as modern Nineveh, has... Uh, gone through many many um, political problems and strife you have um, the Nabi Yunus mound or Nabi Yunus is talking about the prophet Jonah and there's a bit famous biblical story about uh, Jonah going to the Assyrians to uh, make them repent of their violent ways and then the Bible says that they did repent and were forgiven um, the Islamic State of Iraq or ISIS has um, left uh, its mark on this area right now as well, and that's another topic. But um, you know, this area exists with this history still there, and what's left of it. Um, we'll see how war in the modern times will, will affect more of the archaeology in the negative way. But anyways. Um, Okay, so then we can um, go into, well, you know, actually, I'm just going to stop right here. I want to cover a little bit more of, uh, we're going to go into Mesopotamian religion just a little bit in the Epic of Gilgamesh, and then um, we'll move on to Egypt, and then we'll be done with the section.